Father God, we come before you today. Lord, we declare, we confess that our hearts are easily distracted, that we easily wander from you, God. But bring us back, bring our attention back to you, and our heart focus back on you, God, that we'll be refreshed and renewed. God, there's so many demands of this, this world, life. And God, the only thing that we are called to do is to love you, love you more. Draw us near today, that we may do so. Thank you, Lord. Be, be in our midst of you. Patience means endurance. 
with all endurance, long-suffering with joyfulness. So, you know, there, there's a way that we can be joyful while we're suffering. Amen. And that's what Paul's desire was for the church, for them to understand that God, and, and then he goes even a, a deeper here, and he says to give thanks with joyfulness, joyfulness and give him thanks. Can we give thanks to God in the middle of a storm? That's the true test of faith. Can we be joyful when everything is chaos around in our lives, right? It's easy to be joyful when things are going good, but when things are going not the way we desire, can we be joyful and understand that God is in control? Amen. So, he thanks God, right? Thanks God that he delivered us and moved us, and we ought to thank him today, that he delivered us and moved us from darkness to light. And that's what that word translated means, to move from one place to the other, to translate. Um, we, we use that in, in the language terminology, right? We translate from the Greek over here to the, to the English. But in actuality, it means to move from one place to the other. Deliver. Deliverance is where God draws you closer to himself. That's what deliverance is. Right? And redemption, that means he paid our ransom. He paid the debt. Amen. Paid the debt that we owe. And then he goes on to say that Jesus Christ was and is the image of the invisible God. Right? No man has seen God at any time, but we understand that Jesus Christ was the image of God. What, what do we mean by image? Image is like looking in the mirror, the exact representation of who God is, was embodied in Jesus Christ, right? So, he created all things, invisible, visible, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, he created it all. And, and when we talk about principalities and powers, we're talking about, he's talking about the things that are not visible. Because there's thrones and dominions that are not visible. There's angels that exist. There's also evil angels that exist. And they do the bidding, right? So we, we have to understand that it is not, as, you know, heaven is not what we see and touch and feel, right? The Bible says that eye hath not seen, ear hasn't heard what God has prepared for them that love them. So we understand that it's not what we see. This is just temporal right here. Amen. So the invisible. Right? He's the invisible God. We can't see him. But he, he robed himself in flesh, manifested himself to us, right? So all things we know are created by him and for him. And in him all things what? Consist, hold together. All things hold together in God. You know, scientists have, have, have begun to study the, you know, the, the principles of life, right? And, 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 and go into the atom and, and the neuron and, and, and all of this and understand what, what puts, what's the, the cell of life. But all that God holds together. Every part of us, right? He would not be God if he did not have his way in all things. There is, there's no two gods. The devil's not God. The devil can't do anything unless God allows him. He's not a demigod. God is God. He's God all by himself. Amen? And that's what we have to realize. When sickness comes, when trials come, when things come in our lives, come on, get it out of your head that the devil's... No, God allowed the devil to wreak havoc in your life. And it's for a purpose. What, whatever his divine purpose it might be, it might be to draw us closer to him. It might be for some correction in our life, whatever it might be. But the first thing we ought to do is fall on our face before God and say, God, what are you trying to tell me in all of this? Because obviously I haven't been listening to you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, yes, there are forces working alongside of you, against you, above you, under you, and that we're all created by him. Devil's a created being, created by God, fell from grace, Amen. created by God. See, most Christians have the view that the enemy, the adversary, the evil inclination, whatever you want to call him, 
runs around roaming and doing what he wants. No, it's incorrect. He can't do anything unless he asks God first to do it. Job 1, 6 through 12. It's there. For Job was afflicted. The enemy came to God and said, hey. And the Lord said, look at my servant Job. Look at my servant, Captain Kim over here. Look, put your name in. Look at my servant. Amen. Put Job to the test. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God will show you off and put you to the test. Amen. And it's a test of faith where you're, whether you're going to be able to stand or give in. Amen. That's why he talks about being strengthened. That's why he talks about endurance, being able to endure. Yeah, it's easy to endure when everything's fine. But the real test of endurance is when everything is not fine. Amen. And it is, it's in those moments that God is trying to increase our faith in Him. It all works together for the good, for Him to increase our faith in Him. We might not understand it at that moment, but keep on enduring, keep on walking. You'll understand it better by and by. No, God does not reveal everything to us. He doesn't. Amen. He tells us exactly what we need to know. Because most of it is a walk of faith. If he told you everything, it wouldn't be faith. Amen. It wouldn't be faith if he told you every step, if he told you every problem, if he told you every dilemma, if he told you every good thing. It wouldn't be faith. So he's encouraging us through faith. That's how we walk and we draw closer to him. Amen. Our very life is in existence is because God allowed it to be so. The things you face is because He is God and God all by Himself. Amen. Some of us need to recognize this today. That He's God and he's, He will give His glory to no other. Amen. So He's the head of the body, the church, the beginning. Genesis means the beginning. He's the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. Amen. And guess what? He holds first place. That word preeminence means first place. He holds first place. Every race, every battle, every circumstance, he's first place. Amen. And if he's first place, that ought to give us some encouragement and some hope that we win because he already went to the cross. He holds first place for us. The preeminence. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this, right? Head of the body holds first place. And Colossians 1.19 says that all fullness dwells in him. Fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus' body. And we are complete in him. It also says it in Colossians chapter 2. Leading him, head of all principality and power. Colossians 2, verse 9 through 12 says this For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Right? We, can, we can go with it. That, that can even go deeper right there. Right? And ye are complete in him. You're complete. Say, I'm complete. You see, God calls those things that are not as though they were. And God sees you complete because he knows your beginning and your ending. And that's why he can say here right now that you're complete. Amen. And that's hope and that's faith. Glory to God. Which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. You know, I, I have a lot of people ask me, is baptism essential? Well, the Bible says it's essential. And buried with him in baptism. You want to identify with Christ, you gotta, you got to die yourself. Jesus Christ had to die himself to go to Calvary. To, he had to give up his own will to be put in a borrowed tomb. It wasn't even his tomb. Amen. And 
that's why baptism is essential, right? It's not just an outward thing that we do or just tradition. There's something spiritual that happens when you're baptized. You're buried with him. You're, you're putting away the old man and identifying with Christ. And that's the circumcision, right? The circumcision. In the Old Testament, they had circumcision. They cut off the foreskin, right? Every male. Well, now in the New Testament, it's the circumcision of the heart. And how is our heart circumcised? We come to God. We die to self. We're buried. We identify with Him. And you are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him from the dead. Amen. Jack, can come and sing as we close here. That's okay. And we're, you know, just to understand, you know, we, we filled the baptismal tank today open had some soldiers that, that wanted to be baptized, you know, at the end of the day, can't force them. It's your desire, but we have to feel if you would like to be baptized, we'll, we'll be happy to close for you. Hey, baby, you know, we can do that. We can make that happen. But right now, let's all stand up. We're going to go to God. If God has spoken to you, then we're going to take this time to respond to the word of the Lord. Kids going to play, brother. Come sing with us. Amen. Sing unto the Lord and close out in a word of prayer. Amen. If you feel you need prayer, Chad Marshall, come up. If you feel you need prayer, the chapels are here. The altars are open. We'll pray with you.